we've been warned of this coast. Told that we're crazy and even too ambitious. And maybe they're right, but we're going to give it a red hot crack. Honestly, last night couldn't have gone worse. This is the wild west coast of Australia, where the huge waves of the Indian Ocean are unimpeded for thousands of miles until clashing with this rugged, vast and desolate coastline where over 1,600 ships have come to grief. Oh, here. While there are magical interludes. Woo! Are you serious? It's gonna be epic, but the distances to get to these places are huge. We're soon to discover that traversing this coastline will be one of the most physically demanding and mentally taxing endeavors we have ever embarked on. This west coast is just it's a piece of work, eh? Ah, oh, it's a piece of work. <laughs> but it's all part of the bigger picture. This unforgiving stretch of coastline is a necessary leg for us to conquer if we're to realise our dream of circumnavigating Australia. Oh my god, like, let it be over. If we wanted champagne sailing, we would have hugged the equator. But we wanted adventure. How you guys handling this really well? I don't know if the karma would be able to return the favour. This season will see us dropping from 16 to 34 degrees south and covering over 1,500 nautical miles to reach the Southern Ocean in time before the seasons change. Hey guys, welcome to the West Coast. And welcome <laughs> to season four, the Wild West. Last season, we left you at probably one of the most wild and luxurious anchorages in the world. This anchorage is home to one of the flattest night's sleep you'll ever get, a ladder to your own personal waterfall spa, and up from that you've got a massive, massive waterfall water feature into an even bigger pool. It was a glorious way to wrap up our time in the Kimberley, being anchored only metres away from this waterhole and falls. I'm really going to miss this place. We've spent the morning filling our tanks with nature's finest one last time whilst we waited for the tide to creep up and open the gates of this tidal pool we've called home for the past week. Alrighty, we've been in Crocodile Creek for the last few days, but we are today pushing off. We've got to get out of here on the high tide where it's now high tide and we're leaving. We're just untying our lines now. So the tide's high enough now that I can actually get to and reach these, I don't know what you call these lines, the cliff lines. So I'll get the cliff lines off and then get back to the mothership, raise the anchor and we'll be on to the next new and exciting, wonderful thing. Yeah, it's a strange marina, but it's like a marina. You got free water, free electricity, nice night's sleep. All right, I, gotta, I need two hands. Sorry guys, I need two hands. Last line. Last line. Alright, let's get out of here, eh? Get out of here. This is not exactly our last anchorage of the Kimberley. Today, we're doing a small jump to Silica Bay, which, in contrast to the rest of the muddy grounds and red rocky cliffs of the Kimberley, this bay's beach is strangely covered in white silica sand. It's like snow sand. This bay is the perfect launch point out of the Kimberley, allowing us to say our final goodbyes before crossing King Sound. Oh my God. <laughs> we will then officially hit the west coast and turn Nakama's bow south and towards Broome, where we will do some much needed provisioning after months of living off grid. That was the most interesting shop I've ever done in my life. We've got to say, we're pretty keen to eat something other than oyster and onion pasta. Is it right? It's a vibe. Yeah, you're all good on the right. There's a few rocks there, but you've got plenty of distance. This is your line here, straight out. Bye, Crock Creek. I love you. Bye. Bye. Man, I really did love that place. Something special about it. One of the things that makes this place so special is that we're currently navigating over what would be dry land at low tide. 
It's a little nerve-wracking knowing our keel is probably only narrowly gliding over rocks and logs right now. But we made it in, so we know we can make it back out. Every time you get the anchor up here, you bring about 14 kilos of mud with you. The boat has just been absolutely atrocious, but I think that, oh, we'll see. Oh, I think that was the last muddy anchorage. We'll see. Um, hopefully our efforts of washing the decks will be rewarded with a nice sandy anchorage. <laughs> oh man, like, I've never slept so good, but I'm not gonna miss it out in the Kimberley how muddy the decks get. I think there will be a few things we won't miss about the Kimberley, such as the crocodiles and negotiating the largely uncharted and chaotic tidal waters. But there was so much good here that we will cherish for the rest of our lives. The Kimberley has just been so incredible. I cannot believe that an area of the world like this exists. I'm so stoked that we got to experience that area of coastline. It's a bittersweet feeling creeping towards our last anchorage. We're sad to say goodbye, but also so excited to see what's to come on this next leg of our voyage. <gasps> no way! Oh, oh, look how big the mama's fins are. Yeah, I cannot get over how much of a perla of a day it is. It is so stunning. And the seas, there is absolutely no swell. It's just dead flat. We've got the lightest breeze, obviously we're motoring, but it's just beautiful. It is just beautiful. Oh, I think I'm feeling extra good today because I submitted my last assignment for the semester late last night <laughs> i only i literally got it in with one minute to spare i looked at the time because obviously there's a time difference from where we are and where the uni is and i was like da, 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 da. i've got so i've got another two hours until the until the deadline and then i pressed submit and realized that we're two hours behind and that i i pressed submit literally with one minute to spare on their time anyway so i got that done so i'm feeling extra 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 good today i feel like there's a massive weight taken off my shoulders another semester done we're getting close to the end of uni we can see the light sort of so yeah feeling good and it's just a beautiful day and we had a beautiful start to the day so it's just a nice day you know you know when you just have those good days it's a good day <laughs> For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, both Slim and I have been attending university completely online while slowly sailing around Australia. COVID was a pivotal point of our lives. Really, it was then when we set off with no end destination in mind, but to just keep Australia to our port side until eventually we'd circumnavigate the country and end up with a couple of degrees up our sleeves. Although we've been doing uni for a while now, that post assignment submission feeling never gets old. So we're going to soak up the beautiful day and our last moments in the Kimberley. All right, well this is it. We're sort of emerging from this last little cluster of islands here and we're noticing there's not much on the other side. We are steadily edging ourselves towards the, the end of our time in the Kimberley. It's a strange feeling. Whitehaven Beach in the Kimberley. It's really bizarre actually because this is the only beach in this area that we've just gone past that is this white. All the other beaches that are just you know around the corner in the next bay over are like yellow. Obviously it's silica sand because it's called silica bay which is super super fine beautiful white sand which is the same as Whitehaven Beach. I don't know why it's here. How did it get here? It's super weird. <laughs> I was just thinking, the 
this is the first beach that we've been on for a really long time. Yeah, like a really long time and it's a beautiful beach. I just can't get over how white the sand is. Like it fully feels like chalk beneath your feet. And it makes like such a funny sound. It's like obscenely loud. It's weird, eh? It sounds like snow. Yeah, Simon said it sounds like snow and it does. It sounds like snow. It's like snow sand. That's weird, eh? <laughs> so funny. Due to the pristine sand, Silica Beach is actually a popular swimming spot despite the presence of crocodiles. On the high tide, the water is so clear here you'd be able to spot one from a mile away. But our timing has fallen on a low tide, so the water was a little bit too sus and we've decided to head back to the boat for a spot of tea. We're drinking tea because we're out of booze. Nice sunset though. Uh, like, why do people drink tea? It's good it, when you taste but it. But how much better would a beer be? <laughs> Pretty good. Ha 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 ha. One thing I certainly don't think I'm ever going to forget in our time here is like the insane tidal stains on the rocks. It's mind blowing on the cliffs because you're just tendering past or walking past and you're like, oh yeah, the water will be up above my head in a few hours time. So that's something that I'll take with me as an interesting phenomena I've never seen before. Bird. She cool. saw that. She did see that, hey. Is that a bird, Chili? Flip, flip. And with that, we settled into our last night, ready for an early morning wake up. We are officially leaving the Kimberley now. We're doing it. We set sail at 4 a.m. It's like 6 now. But yeah, I don't know, I've sort of been up since probably about two because we're not used to rolly nights. So now that was our first little taste. We've got to get used to rolly nights. We're in a pretty open anchorage. So not much sleep up in the night, stowing things away so they didn't fall off benches and stuff. So I guess that's the new reality, eh? Getting rolled to sleep. Goodbye, Kimberly. Good night. Goodbye, flat night sleep. You're going to miss that. I'm already starting to reminisce. Damn. All right. More reminiscing <laughs> later. So this journey should hopefully take us to Broome. The big smoke. Back in the big smoke. Civilization. <laughs> I think we're ready for it. Good morning, Chili. Good morning. Good morning, you. So Broom is about 155 nautical miles from Silica Bay, an overnight sail. I'm gonna get up real close here so you can hear me. What I don't think we were expecting about this trip was that although we're saying goodbye to the Kimberley, we are not yet out of its tidal influence. We are straight into heading over the top of King Sound, home to Australia's biggest and the second biggest tidal range in the world, forcing an incredible amount of water up and down the sound and creating the turbulence we are traversing through currently. So we're cutting across the top of King Sound and there is so much tidal influence here. Obviously the tides are pretty massive around here and I don't know there's a lot of water movement in and out of this sound. You can see on the our chart there that the way that the boat's pointing compared to where we're actually heading is pretty close to 90 degrees to where the boat is heading to then where our actual heading is taking us, if that makes sense. More specifically, what Soph's trying to articulate here is that we're actually sailing sideways. Yeah, you're sort of aiming into the sound and eventually we're gonna make it just over the top of it. So I can see you were struggling. I was struggling. We've just been having like little breakfast or um, like dinners and stuff. Like we're on pretty bad food rations. So I've been having mung beans for lunch for like two weeks now. Just constantly, every day, I'm like rotating mung beans. Yeah, we're running significantly low on food at the moment. Actually, we have some carrots, which is always useful for more purposes than just eating. 
we've got heaps of fresh food at the moment, so thought we could spare half a carrot. So I've snapped the top end of a carrot off and I could get that into where the pipe goes. And then I've tightened a hose clamp around the carrot. So it's like a carrot doorstop. Carrots are good, but that's about the only fresh food we have. Everything else is either coming out of a tin or out of a dry food bag. We're pretty obviously desperate to catch a fish. We'd love a fish to like have something a bit more I don't know, something with a bit more substance because at the moment we're on a very high carb diet. That is like going to turn into glue or something. Yeah, that would be good. On the menu is some pasta. We went with fettuccine after a rigorous debate between rigatoni <laughs> and fettuccine about which pasta we like best. So the question is, is that cheese or is that pasta? Yeah, the question, the question is... Is it pasta like, with cheese or cheese with pasta? Is it cheese or pasta or pasta or cheese? I don't know, but there's definitely a lot of cheese in that pasta. Yeah, so we're pretty keen to get some fresh food in Broome or catch a fish. If we caught a fish, we'd be laughing. But we just cannot seem to catch a fish at the moment. Ah, the fish. Fish have eluded us for some time now. Oh, me. Either we've been losing tackle in line to sharks. Fix them to another shark? All I can think is that it was a shark and it's bit through the wire trace again. Or catching the smallest fish you could possibly find on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> it's massive when you look at it like it this, though. It's massive! Alright, put it back in! We're hoping with the sight of many a bait ball, something we haven't seen in a while, our dry fish spell could today perhaps be broken. So far today, we've actually, for the first time in months, we've seen plenty of bust-ups. It's promising, but it's also, in some ways, a little bit frustrating because you're like, they're all around us and we haven't had anything yet, but time will tell. And time did tell. After passing a few more bait balls. The day has come! The day has come. Do you want me to slow down even though we're only doing two knots? We've got a fish finally! We finally heard the exciting scream of the reel going off, immediately demanding our attention. Finally, getting some ground on it now. Come on. Oh, I've got a lot of line to get back. It's it was peeling line oh. away. Oh, it's big. What is that? Looks like a mackerel. Either a mackerel or a tuna. Come on. But to our disappointment, it was neither a tuna nor a mackerel. Whoa, what is he? He's not a, no, definitely not a mackerel, eh? No. How are you going to do this? I'm working on figuring that out. Unsure of what it was at this moment, and too big for something we were unsure of, we decided to free the beast on the end of the line. There you go. He's gone? Yeah. Oh boy. Good job, oh. babe. So, I didn't want to get the pliers near his mouth. He had some pretty big teeth on him, but I managed to um, get the gaff around the hook and he swam off all right. So I'm glad that we didn't have to deal with him and. He's glad they didn't have to deal with us. The curse now at least has been broken. However, we're still unsure of what the curse has been broken with. So following some research, we were glad that we let that guy swim away. I thought the scales on the fish were weird. So I was like, I've got to have another look. And I'm like, oh, it was just the biggest barracuda I've ever caught. It was big. Anyway, for those of you wondering, because I was, it was a barracuda. So glad we let him go. Fingers crossed we get something better. So with the line back in the water, we continued to steam ahead, very, very slowly. I think this is the slowest we've gone this whole trip. We have tied against us, we're sitting on 1.4 knots as we're trying to just round this cape. It's going to take a while at this rate. <laughs> yeah, we're doing 1.2 now. We tried to time this trip to the best of our abilities with the tide. However, being 24 hours, we were always going to have the tide against us a few times in a few different spots. Although slowly, at least we're still going forwards. And it gives us the time to really soak up the wildlife that is bustling around this cape. Oh, give us a tail. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a bit of a tail. Whale just there. There are so many whales. Wow. Oh! In between whales, there were fish. Oh, I think it might be a shooter. It's diving pretty 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Ah! It got spooked. Oh my god, babe. That pretty much undid. Oh, your hard work. Everything. He's still running. He took so much light now. Oh, that, he didn't want to come up. He's fucking dead. Whatever he is, he's got some pepper in him. He's been eating his. He's been eating his wheat picks. <laughs> The Americans, if you wonder what Vegemite's for, this thing's had a couple Vegemite sandwiches, I reckon. <laughs> oh, well, I haven't. It's not natives. No. Oh, you got him? Yeah. And in between the fish, there were more whales. There are so many whales about at the moment. This past another one that's just chilling on the surface. We are planning on going into the night tonight, but to be honest, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it because there are so many whales around. Uh, obviously, you don't really want to hit a whale. <laughs> Although beautiful to observe during the day, a small unease is beginning to grow as the afternoon draws later. Knowing how many of these beautiful but gigantic creatures are out here and the fact that we'll be sailing through the night. I reckon, probably. Safe to say I've seen more whales today in the last like three years of sailing. As of 2021, over 350,000 humpback whales migrated up and down the West Australian coast. This number is thought to be increasing by 10% every year. It's like a minefield of shipping containers that we have to try and negotiate tonight. Very big shipping containers, eh? Yeah. This is obviously a little bit hazardous considering a full grown humpback whale is roughly twice the size and five times heavier than little old Nakama. It makes me really nervous. When people think of marine hazards, commonly rogue shipping containers come to mind. 83 containers have already gone overboard. It looks like this one's next. But for some perspective, there are estimated to be less than two and a half thousand lost shipping containers globally floating in the ocean at any one time. Like at least these guys might be able to get out of your way. Shipping containers definitely can't. Self-propelled intelligent shipping containers. Yeah. We're grateful, however, that whales do their best to get out of your way, unlike the mindless shipping container. Oh, no way, they're all coming. Look at them all. No way, we've had these guys before. These guys might look like dolphins and they technically are, but they're not your average dolphin. On our voyage towards Darwin, we were greeted by these guys. At the time, I believed them to be pilot whales. So we're pretty sure these are pilot whales. They're like big black dolphins. But we're now 99% sure that they're actually called false killer whales. wildlife today a massive variety of wildlife too we had a houdini tuna oh, wait, i don't know what you mean by that like no houdini always disappears gets away oh there's a daredevil or something i think um stupid barracuda thousand million whales the mini whales that we still don't know what type of whale they are yeah heaps of sea snakes those two sea snakes were banging making more sea snakes <laughs> it's all happening i'm so tired but there's no time for rest because we're back on with the fish. Prior to this fish and after the last tuna that got away, we caught a tuna mackerel. Damn, tuna mac. They're horrible eating. The only good thing they're good for is tuna, tin tuna, but that's all right. He can swim to live another day, swim to live another, live to swim another day. <laughs> but fourth time lucky, surely. We got him! Oh, good job, babe! See, patience, eh? Patience that and perseverance! Is, that's a big monster, too! I knew we'd get a good fish! Oh. <laughs> we needed a good fish! <laughs> the Kimberleys might be over, but the fun has only just begun! Spanish for dinner! 
good. Pretty happy with that. Finally, eh? <laughs> fourth time, fourth fish lucky. Four, four fish, oh, that's a tongue twister for you. Fourth fish lucky. What a specimen. Well, after some decent time without fish, we have finally broken the curse. Tonight, we'll be eating a beautiful Spanish mackerel with our remaining carrots. Life is good. Yes, babe. Teamwork maketh the dream work. Oh, no, I don't want to touch your hand right now. <laughs> anyway, I'm proud of this. What a job. Let's get it filled it up, eh? Do you want to answer the question, why do I always fill it the fish? Oh yeah, someone asked in the comments, why is Soph always the head filleter? Pretty much, she has a lot more patience than me, and if I would do it, I'd be like, no, oh, no, let's go, no, no, no. My hands are covered in fish, I hate this, and I'd miss more than Sophie would. Soph gets every last little bit of meat off it, whereas, yeah, like, I might get distracted halfway through and get over it or something, and she's just better at it. We respect the fish more if Soph does it. She gets every last little screpence off it. All right, thank you, fish. <laughs> Good job. We made a shark happy tonight. Straight from the ocean to plate. You were very keen on fish, so yes, we're having fish for dinner. <laughs> Days are generally jam-packed out on the water. Today was a particularly good one. And at the moment, we're bashing into it. Which is always fun. What's for dinner? Every vegetable that we had blessed in the fridge and Spanish mackerel stir fry. <laughs> Alright, it's been a while since we've had fresh fish. Good? It's horrible. That's good. Yeah, no, it's great. I really am. Unfortunately, the wind has turned right on our nose. However, freshly fueled up from our visit to Dogleg Creek in the Kimberley, we decided we would just motor slash bash into it. We're just plowing through waves, kind of motoring into about, oh, I don't know, true winds, about 10 knots. Apparent wind is obviously more than that. And although noisy and pretty slow, we saw a few positives in this tactic. Yeah, another benefit to this plowing and motoring is obviously, I was a little bit nervous about whales today because we saw so many and at least with all the racket that we're making plowing through these waves there's a good chance that the whales will know that we're coming and hopefully get out of the way um, before we you know potentially hit them so it's making me feel a little bit better about the night how loud we are through the water obviously with our engine as well as like slamming off these waves so yeah i'm kind of glad that we <laughs> that we have to like plow through these at the moment anyway uh we're doing all right so far only sitting on about three knots with current wind and waves against us <laughs> so not doing amazingly all right Doesn't look like much, but it means a lot. This is like the remote north's big smoke. We're um, back in civilization. Those red cliffs right there. Fresh food. Fresh food, fresh beers from the beer store. It doesn't look like much, but it means a lot. We've made it to broom. We might be out of the Kimberley now officially, but we haven't escaped the tides. We're just coming into the anchorage here. And um, yeah, we're sort of in these weird tidal wishy-washy wave things and yeah, anyway, the tide's turned against us. We've had a good run this morning, but let's just get the anchor down. It's always a glorious feeling to arrive at your intended destination after a long 36 hours on the ocean. You just hope that the anchorage is flat and you can catch up on some rest. Hey guys, how are you? We hope you're well. We just wanted to say thank you once again for being extremely patient with us as we've taken some time off. We've just been making some serious miles aboard Nakama and 
Yeah, getting some epic content while we've been at it too. So we're super excited for this coming season. We hope you are too. It's going to be pretty epic. As you can see, I'm not currently aboard Nakama, but more on that to come. I'm sure a few of you have an inkling of what's going on. But yeah, we just wanted to say thank you for your patience. Welcome back. We're super excited to be back. Join us next time as we do some much needed provisioning in Broome before taking the big hop down towards Dampier. We're getting straight into it, making some serious miles on this Western Australian coastline. We're gonna see some beautiful spots and we can't wait to show them to you. So yeah, join along for the journey. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you subscribe. Thank you Patrons for always making these videos possible and um, can't wait to see you next time. Cheers guys.